Okay, so first things first, let's take a look at the instructions here. They read, using a pencil, sketch two different Formula One car designs, reduce mass and friction, that's both surface and fluid, from your design. Show projection lines and keep your drawing neat and clean. Ten points, which means sketch number one's worth five, sketch number two's worth five, total of ten points. Okay? Let's take a quick look at what the front view tells us. So if you look at what I've done here, I've given you this large dotted rectangular shape. That's going to represent this block of wood that you will eventually get from me. Okay? Keep in mind, the entire car comes out of this one block of wood. That means the car body comes out of this block of wood. And what's all this extra stuff for? Airfoils, side pods, maybe your spot. It all comes out of this one single block of wood. Okay? Now, another thing you're going to find on here, got a few other lines. I know when we look at this line, we think hidden line. I probably could use a different line type. Oh well. This is where we're going to put the holes for our wheels. This is where our axles are going to go. Okay? What do you think this shaded area means? Okay. So this shaded area here, we're going to refer to this as the safety zone thickness. That can and has a spec, but this can, all said and done, be no thinner than three millimeters. So when you draw your cars, you may draw right up to that line, but you may not draw into that area. Okay? So just keep that in mind. You can draw up to it, just don't draw through it. Don't draw into that space. Okay? Because we definitely don't want you to cut into it. Definitely not. Now, there is a specification that says your car can be as long as 180 and no longer than 210. But once again, this is a sketch. So even though there are some limits here, this is like one fourth size of your actual car. But just to kind of give you a sense of what a short car might look like, well, we'll just say from here to here is 210 millimeters. So if you're going to make your car a little bit shorter, you would probably stop maybe about, oh, three quarters to maybe half an inch from the end. I'd probably say that would probably be your limit for a short car. Okay? Remember, we're not using any, this is not actual size. Okay? But just to kind of eyeball it. Alright? So the first thing I typically tell students to do is to think of a body. What can the body of this car look like? Remember that a car is broken up into parts. The body is this piece here. This piece that goes right down the middle. It's what everything gets glued onto. So this is actually made up of seven pieces of wood. The body plus one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of wood glued onto it. So that's seven pieces total. So when I talk about body, it's like saying this part right here. It's just this part of your car. What is this part of your car for right now going to look like? Okay. So I'm using D3 up here as an example. The question is, is what would the body and only the body look like before I glue on all these parts? So I'm going to pick up my pencil. I'm going to be honest with you, with my first sketch, I'm going to make a pretty conservative design. You are drawing what you want to draw right now. I'm going to draw something that's pretty conservative. Okay? I would like you, though, to remember that this is not the end. This is the beginning. Okay? So, Demo, what view do we start drawing first? Front view. Period. Hashtag front view. Okay? So I'm going to pick up my pencil, and you're going to do the same. And I'm just going to start thinking of a few things. I'm going to think about a nice, smooth, contoured shape that allows air to easily flow from front to back of my car with very little resistance. That's the name of the game. And I'm going to tell you and remind you over and over again, you've got nothing to lose here on the front of this paper. Okay, because this is not set in stone. This is more about have you drawn a car with all the required parts. What it looks like, we'll talk more about what it looks like and what you can do to it, but for right now, give me a car. Okay, so we're going to start with the car body. Now we've talked about a few things to avoid. 
we talked about the fact that at a very young age you knew that this wouldn't be a good idea for the front of your car. If you stuck your hand out the window and you put it flat like that, it'd get pushed back. So we know flat surfaces on things that go fast usually aren't good. They create a lot of resistance. Okay? So that's typically a no-no. We also know that things that typically go very fast, a lot of times start either very sharp or low on the front, and the, and the design gradually, gradually changes from front to back. Okay? But think of things like an airplane. Think of the front of an airplane. Think of the front of a rocket, the end of a nose gun. Typically, those things start with a what? A tip, a point, right? Okay, so kind of incorporate that same, those same ideas into your design. All right? Now, another thing to be careful with, and I sometimes see this, is that a student makes a very quick and gradual drop like this, because they want to try to make that as thin as possible. And they might say, gosh, I removed all that mass, but what you actually have done is you've increased the amount of drag and resistance by making that really flat surface. So you notice that it had a more, little bit more of a gradual than are just a steep drop. And another thing to be careful with is that we don't have, and I see this probably more on CO2 cars than I see on Formula 1 cars, sometimes kids make kind of these dips in their design. I'm just going to kind of make an example here. And what the air can sometimes do is as it's traveling, and this is on the Science of Speed website, it sometimes starts to create what's called this turbulent air. It's like a pocket. As that air gets trapped, it starts to create some resistance. Okay? So once again, you can almost think about maybe what you did in seventh grade. You might even think that, gosh, maybe my car body kind of resembles a little bit of what like a CO2 drag turbine looks like. Maybe. But it's going to start to grow some legs here in just a minute. So for right now, I'm going to keep it simple. This is my first sketch. You can make yours as complicated as you want. I'm going to take the simple road just to get things started. Okay? So now that I have my body, and I look at it, and I think, okay, I, am, I have a feeling that air can very easily flow over this car with this design. I'm going to move on to the next step. Okay? The next step, typically is to now think about your airfoils, your front and rear airfoils, or as we call them also your wings, the front wing. So let me share with you two things I'm sure you're familiar with. I'm sure you're familiar with these two terms. Concave and convex, yes? <coughs> Heard those terms before? Yep. So we have concave, this is where something slopes inward, we have convex or it actually slopes outward. Okay, and how air reacts to these two shapes, it's a little different. Can someone please open that door? So as the air is moving here, a concave design tends to kind of push the air up and over. Okay, with that convex shape, you can still create that same effect. And at the end of the day, folks, it's all about the shape. Okay, it's all about the shape. But these two shapes can help divert air over your wheels. Would you agree? Yeah, of course they can. It's about size, it's about shape, and it's about placement. So if you look at that D3 car, would you say that front wing or front airfoil, is that convex or is that concave? What do you think? Anybody? Convex. Maybe a little bit more on the convex side. Okay, a little bit more on the convex side. Okay? So... Here's the short answer. Either or. will work just fine. Okay? So let's just say here on the front, I'm going to put an airfoil, but what then is going to go right here? A wheel. a wheel. And if I put a rear airfoil, I'm going to need to put a wheel. So let's just keep in mind that even though we're going to draw these parts, we're also going to have wheels, and then we're going to have this thing called a side pod. Okay? And remember, this is a sketch. So maybe for my front airfoil, uh, maybe I'm going to draw something like this. And I'm going to tell you right now that I'm giving you so many different ways to do this. This is not, just because Mr. Bolt does it this way, it doesn't mean you have to do it that way. No, no, not at all. Okay, I'm just giving you some ideas. So I'm kind of drawing a car where the front airfoil falls a little short from the front of the car. Some kids do it like that, and some kids do it like that, where the front airfoil 
aligns with the front of their car. It's personal preference. Whatever you want to do. I'm going to do one car like this. I'm going to do another car a different way. Okay? When I get to my rear airfoil, so we're saying that's kind of a concave design. Okay? Then maybe I'm going to mix things up and on the back. I'm going to make this a kind of a convex design. So the idea here is that the air rolls off the back of that car. Okay? Now, wheels are next. And then obviously we have a side pod. Okay? When you draw these wheels, I would probably make them roughly about the size of like a nickel. Okay? Don't make them too big. Obviously don't make them too small. So here's what I usually do. I kind of draw from this dashed line here. I kind of draw a half circle. And then I draw another half circle. That's just the way I do it. I try to get something fairly circular on my paper. Remember people, you're pushing a pencil just like me, but I'm hoping you're kind of doing your own thing. Okay, so try to make that as circular as you can. And then with any circle, I'm going to ask you to put a little center line in the middle. That's going to come in handy in a minute. Okay. Let me go to that front wheel. And I'm leaving a little bit of a gap, obviously, between the wheel and the part. I don't want to have the wheel rolling and rolling and making contact with the airfoil. That's called surface friction. I don't want to do that. Okay. And then we're going to put that little center line. Now, what would I do with this part of the car body because it's behind the wheel? What would I do to that line? Would it be a solid line? It's behind the wheel. No. What would it be? Hidden line. Very good. So I'm going to erase that line and erase it and make it a dashed line. Ah, there we go. Okay. So yeah, that's a hidden line. Okay. So what goes here? Side pod. Side pod. And the idea here is to keep the air moving and not get trapped. Keep pushing it from the front to the back of the car. Now I'm just going to draw something very simple. I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Now just because it looks like a rectangle from this perspective doesn't mean it's just a rectangle. Um, I could show you this car right here. This is E3 on the Science of Speed website. If I were to draw the front view of this, it would look just like my drawing. But look at what this would look like from the top view. See how they curved it in? So just because it's rectangular in a front view doesn't mean it's going to be rectangular in the top view. Not necessarily. Could be. Doesn't have to be. Okay? Alright? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, folks, that this is considered a completed front view, but there's something I could add that's optional. What is it? Yep, and they call that the rear wing, called the spoiler. Okay, and according to my paper, it is optional, totally optional. So, what's the point, Senior Bolt? Well, the short answer looks, aesthetics, wait, you're saying it, it won't make my car go faster? Not so much in this race. Will it make it go slower? Nah. Will it add much of any weight? <coughs> nope. Why? It's pretty small. It's a very small part of your project. So why are you giving me a choice? I'll tell you why. Because I can. And because Formula One cars do have this thing called a rear wing, but that typically comes into play when they're going much faster. But we're kind of replicating the F1 in schools rules a bit. They were required to do it. So I'm just giving you the option to do it. So what I'm getting ready to draw is not a requirement. And it could go in a lot of different places. That rear wing goes on the top of, roughly the top of the CO2 dragster housing. But if you look at the number one car, not to say that this is better, it's just where they placed it. This rear wing kind of goes just on the side of the CO2 cartridge housing. So here's the good news. You don't have to do this. And it gets even better. You might even decide now you don't want to do it, but later you do. 
Fine. You might decide now you do want to do this and later you don't. That's fine. It's an optional part. <coughs> so it's wide open. Okay? But at the end of the day, this is going to be a little bit more for appearance and aesthetics. Some kids will glue this on the side. Some kids will glue this piece on the top. Some kids will even 3D print this part to make it really, really, really skinny and thin, which means it practically adds no weight to your car, and then we'll glue it on. Okay? It can be made out of balsa wood. It can be 3D printed. This is probably the only part that I would consider 3D printing because these larger pieces, 3D printed, are actually heavier than if they're balsa wood. Okay? So balsa wood being very light, I'd make the majority of my car out of that material. Okay? Now, is that a requirement? No. No, thank you. Hopefully that's what I just got at. Okay? That's our optional part. So what would be the next step? Okay, how do I start a how do I start a new view? I first start with projection lines. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna jump into one part at a time. Let's start with the back of your car body. So right here, let's draw a projection line. Remember light lines. Then let's jump over here, and I did this for a reason, because I want to just make a point. Some of you, like me, have a part that falls short of the front of the car. So this projection line would actually go here, because I'm talking about just the body. But if you made a car like this, where the front airfoil is also at the front of the car, then your projection line and your front airfoil are basically the same. Okay? They're all going to, both can come off the same point. All right, but I did this for a reason, okay, just to kind of show you what this could look like depending on the drawing. Now, try to make these lines as vertical as possible. That one's a little off, so I'm going to straighten this one out a little bit. There we go. And let's start with just what the body would look like. So let's take this blue car, okay? All right, decent design, decent design, but what does that look like from above? You tell me. If I had to draw just the body, what shape would I draw? There it is, a rectangle. Thank you very much. So let's just say that I'm making a car like that. Then I would draw a line over these dotted lines. And you got it. It's pretty easy. Top view is a piece of cake with this, with this project. Because we're dealing only with 2D. You don't have to get as complex with your curves because a lot of the stuff from above just looks flat. But wait, Mr. Bolt, I'm not doing that. I'm doing like that... D3 car that you keep talking about. Okay, so here's what some of you will do. Some of you will add a third projection line for your body. The question is, is where does the end of your, we'll call it the bullet, where does it end? Well, usually for many of you it ends right about here. So you would, some of you would draw this third projection line. And what you would then do is you would then show me the shape of this part of your car. Maybe it's going to look like a bullet. Maybe it's going to be a straight line. I don't know. And here's what I like to do. What does this dotted line in the middle tell me? Symmetry? Okay. I could obviously draw the other half. I sometimes like to rotate my paper. This is just me. I like to rotate my paper like this so that when I draw that other half, I can clearly see that it's symmetrical. That's just the way I like to draw things when I make this drawing. You can do it any way you want. But you would have something more like that. Okay. All right, so just to make sure you know what to do depending on the shape you want to make. Now, I'm going to go back, just because I can, I'm going to go back to my original design, and I'm just going to erase this. So if you were making kind of a conical bullet shape, leave it. If not, we're going to move on. Okay, so I'm just going to keep my car simple. That's what I told you at the beginning. That's what I'm going to keep doing. Okay, simple design. So I'm, going to, I'm kind of following this design, just a rectangular shape. Okay? Now, what you do next... I'll be honest with you, you could take two roads. You could say, let's draw the wheels next and then the parts, or you could draw the parts next and then the wheels. It's a coin toss. So let me show you how it looks if you go wheels next. So we know from experience that something like this would need how many projection lines? A circle. How many projection lines? Someone said it? Three. Good. Good for you. Watch this. We have one up the middle. Make them light, folks. And then we know that there's one coming off of each side of that wheel. There it is. Okay? Three projection lines off of the circle. 
So I'm going to let me do it again. One off the center. Then one off of each side. Okay, just like that. So if I'm going to go the wheel approach first, okay, watch this. Okay, please do not do this to these cars. I'm just going to kind of show you what this looks like. But we know cars got four wheels, all the same diameter. Front view, circular, easy. Top view, here's what I want you to remember. Okay, do not do this to the cars on the table, please. Just watch. On a top view perspective, what would that wheel look like? Don't worry about this little piece sticking out. What shape would that be in a top view? Rectangle. Rectangle. Good. Done. Now, is there a hole going through the car? Yeah. Yeah, there has to be a hole. If we're going to make an axle hole, there's got to be a hole. So to keep it simple, knowing that this hole has some diameter to it, let's just make this dashed. Just keep it simple. Let's draw just a very small part of the axle extending out. Very small part. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I have my limits. Watch. I know to start here and end here. And let's make sure the wheel doesn't touch the car body. To leave a little bit of a gap. Just a small gap between the wheel and the car. Now, you might say, wow, why are you going so far out? Why are you going past that dotted line? Well, guess what? Look at the wheels. Do they extend just out past the airfoils? Inside? Yep, they do. Okay, so these wheels do have a tendency of sticking out just like on a real Formula One car, as you saw in some of those pictures I showed you. So this is normal that the wheel goes just beyond this dotted line. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Up. Over. Okay. People, sketching, right? Don't sit there with the ruler. We're just sketching. Okay, you're going to complicate things if you start getting too precise. Okay, we're just laying down some ideas. So I'm going to draw now my rear wheel. And here's my other wheel. All right, looking good. So that's one way to approach it. The other way is I would have laid out all my airfoils and side pods first. Then I would have done this step last. Okay, so I'm going to show you two ways. So now I am going to do my parts. So let me start with my front airfoil. Um, how many of you, like me, have an airfoil that's just kind of straight right here? Okay. How many of you have an airfoil that curves on the inside? How many of you have an airfoil that some of it goes over part of the wheel? Okay, good. So there's a lot of ways to do this. So let me show you this way. This way is pretty simple. Not to say that anything's complicated, but just watch. It's the extents. You take the furthest point to the left and the furthest point of the right of the part. So there's my furthest point to the left. There's my furthest point to the right. And you extend projection lines. Now keep in mind some of you have an airfoil which lines up with the front of your car. So you're not drawing that second projection line because that front airfoil lining up with the front of the car, they share that same projection line. So some of you may have only drawn one. Okay. Now, by doing this, here's the question. Okay, look at that airfoil. Convex. But what does that look like from above? What shape? Say it. Rectangle. So really, even though it's a curved convex shape from the front, it's just a good old rectangle from above, folks. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, that's easy. But wait, look at the D3 car. Is that going to be a rectangle from the top view? No. So some of you might be doing this. It might be this, but then some of you might be doing something like this, for all I know. For all I know. Could be curving. I've even seen some airfoils on some cars that kids make, where rather than using curves, they kind of use angles. It's kind of like angle here, and kind of like angle here. I'm saying a lot of different stuff. But I keep saying it. I'm going to stick to it. I'm just going to keep mine simple for now. I'm just going to keep mine rectangular, just because I can. Nothing wrong with that. So if your airfoil goes above your wheel, it's going to look more like this. 
let's say your airfoil goes over your wheel. I'm going to make a kind of pronounced airfoil. So you would have had a projection line here, correct? Okay. So let me now erase what I originally did. So really your airfoil starts here and now ends here. So then what that's telling me is I probably need to include some hidden lines. Watch this. This is going to stop right here. It's going to go here. So what happens to the wheel? I replace it from object with what? Hidden. Oh, there you go. Dashed, 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 dashed. So I go from a solid line to a hidden line. Okay? So same thing would happen here. If this were to extend over, and then down, and over, I need to erase that. And make it hidden. Oops, make it hidden. There we go. Okay? So make sure, depending on your design, you're drawing it accurately. Okay? Alright, so I think we get the idea. Now, I'm going to keep my rear airfoil. It's, I'm fine with that. I changed it. Not that I, I meant to originally do that. I'll leave it. That's fine. I'm going to move on. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the back. Rear airfoil. And once again, my rear airfoil shares a projection line because it also aligns with the back of my car. So once again, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Okay. And then I'm going to draw some projection lines for my side pod. And sometimes it might look like a part touches a wheel, but we know that looking at it from a front view, we can see that there's a space. So sometimes the top view, it almost looks like this side pod as I draw this right now. It looks like it's really, 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 really close to the wheel. But if I look at my front view, I can see there's a gap. Okay, just kind of this, the shape from one view to the next, things start to look a little different and they might look like something's making contact. So that's why we have two views to kind of better explain what we're seeing from one view to the next. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and once again sketch this here. Okay, last thing I'm going to do is actually the optional part. So right now people, that's done. I could say that this is finished. But I did draw this optional piece. How many of you are considering a spoiler? Just, get, just, just curious. Okay, so I need to show you how, what to do. This is where a lot, of, uh, a lot of hidden lines come into play. So watch this. I'm going to put a hidden line here. Excuse me, a hidden line. Projection line here. I'm going to put a projection line here. So once again, this is just speaking to just a few of you in the room. So let me show you what this would look like. So here's my spoiler. It actually sits just over two things. Look at it. This spoiler covers part of this rear airfoil and covers part of this wheel. So if I were looking straight down, there'd be things I can't see from a top view perspective. So I need to show that. So I'm actually going to pick up my pencil. I'm going to do some erasing. And I'm going to now make part of this rear airfoil hidden. I'm going to make part of this wheel hidden. And once again, this is kind of why some people would draw their parts first and then draw the wheels second, so that they can just, as they draw the wheels, they can draw hidden lines and object lines. All right? Now I'm going to, once again, I'll do it a little bit differently in the next design. Okay, so a combination of hidden lines, object lines. And once again, folks, this is why we do a technical drawing before we embark on this journey. I think it, things make a little bit more sense having done them before with that one orthographic technical drawing you did. Why we do a lot of the things that we do here on this sketch. Okay? Is that a completed drawing? Yes, that's a five-point drawing, and here's why. Quick check. I got a body. Got a body. Rear airfoil, rear airfoils. Front airfoil, front airfoils. Side pod, side pod. And obviously that was optional. But yes, I've also included all my projection lines. That's called showing your work. Okay? If you've done that, you have a five-point sketch. And now it's a matter of starting sketch two. Which means 
now push yourself. Push yourself to think of something different. Let's take it one step further. Maybe something lighter. Maybe something with better aerodynamic properties. So what are you going to do? Okay? Some kids will just make things smaller. Oh, make the car shorter? Sure. Make the airfoil slightly smarter? Sm uh, smaller? Sure. Okay? There's a lot of things you can do to start to lighten the load a little bit. Some of you may or may not have curved parts in. That removes a little bit of mass. Think about it. Think about it. Okay? So let's go ahead and start sketch number two once you have sketch one complete.